I love, I love hearing my name. I love my name. Uh, I don't care if that's vain because I spent a lot of time hating my name. Our names are powerful, literally. Our brains have a unique reaction to the sound of our names, sometimes even while sedated. But many students have their names mispronounced or disregarded every day in school. So what impact does that have on their education? And what can educators do? My name is Adina Sajani. Mara. Davia. Nikbach. Lilia. Nadej Vizimongu. Ardan. It's actually Nikbach, not Nikbat, Nikbi, Nikbad. Do the embarrassing the moment when there's a pause and you know it's because of you. They just go so far that sometimes it's even concerning, like Rajahada. I remember just being like, oh, that must be me. Especially if they said David, everyone would laugh. I learned pretty quickly that it was easier to just go by AJ, which is something that I quite honestly regret doing now. In 2012, researchers Dr. Rita Coley and Dr. Daniel Salarsano published a study called Teachers Please Learn Our Names, Racial Microaggressions in the K-12 Classroom. Here's Dr. Coley. Schools are not a power neutral space. Teachers are an authority figure. Teachers have power in those contexts. And so often what they say goes. Often what they say is viewed as the legitimate knowledge in the space. So it takes a lot for a first grader to say to their teacher, Excuse me, you pronounced my name this way, but it's actually this way, and it matters to me. In fact, it takes a lot for a student of any age. The first time I ever tried to confront a professor was actually last semester, and it wasn't really a good experience. Some professors just don't even ask. They're just like, can I call you by this name? She mispronounced my name and asked me if she can call me something else. Regardless of like whether we want to be called a certain way or not, it's an elder person who has a PhD and this and that. Later on, I felt like it was my responsibility to actually email her and tell her that, Professor, I get that it's the first day of class, but you don't, you, you don't even have the right to ask me if you can call me something else. She later on apologized, but it's only because we pushed the conversation forward. So what is the big deal? If you can't understand my name, how can you understand me? A microaggression is a subtle form of discrimination that can occur intentionally or unintentionally. And it can include telling a student their name is too hard to say. We're centering a particular cultural vantage point when we say things are difficult to pronounce because they're not really difficult to pronounce. Inherently, they're difficult to pronounce for us. Dr. Coley's research underscores that a person's name is their entrance point to the world. So what happens when those names are mispronounced, disregarded, or even mocked? They start to feel like their name was a burden. They start to feel like they themselves were a burden. And so they began to withdraw sometimes from participating socially and academically in schools. There's actually a term for the unintended lessons kids learn in school. Things that live between the lines and in hallways and in roll call. There's a lot that we impart onto our students or on each other that is complete like subtext, right? It's, we don't say it out loud, right? El Juhara El Tani is the head of educational and community programs at Qatar Foundation. Her work focuses on hidden curriculum and how to fix it. I was in a class once, uh, a sixth grade uh, all boys uh, English class. And it was like 15 minutes quiet reading time. I was sitting at the back of the class at one point. The, boy puts his hand up and asks the teacher, he's like, sir, I have a question. He goes, yeah. He goes, why are they all white? You think kids don't register? It registers. There are decades worth of studies examining how curriculum, sometimes the world over, is primarily Eurocentric, male, and upper class, with names to match. It registers. But the curriculum is not always something that's up to a teacher themselves. Learning names, on the other hand, is. You're sitting in the back row in a lecture with 200 students reading on your phone. You're going to get me calling you by name. What are you doing? Professor Susan Dunn has been teaching at Northwestern University in Qatar for over a decade. Her undergrad experience at a liberal arts college with small classes influenced her decision to memorize the names of every student in her classes, wherever she teaches, even in the 200-person lectures. For me, teaching is about a lot more than just transmission of knowledge. It's about the growth and development of human beings. 
And so I can be far more effective in doing that if I have at least a recognition of, know the identity of people, know their names, know a little bit of something about them, even in a large class, that they know when they walk in and I say hi and use their name, that I really know who they are. When I hear someone say my name correctly, I'd be like, oh my God, finally this person, they know how to say my name. I think in our increasingly globalized world where we have people from all sorts of walks of life interacting, that the idea that we're gonna mispronounce each other's names is pretty much a given. And so the question and the challenge is to do as much as we can to figure out how to embrace each other, which sometimes starts with simply taking the time and effort to figure out how to greet each other properly. Or we're not asking teachers to um, be able to say everybody's name correctly the second they walk through the door. But I think there's a difference between um, imposing that, oh, your name is hard to say versus I haven't learned how to say a name like this yet, but I'm working on it because you're important and your name is important and I want to honor that in my classroom. What working on it looks like in practice might be different for every educator. What's key is allowing teachers the room to be students in this too. If we flip this around and we we think about the expectation for students to learn lots of new things all at the same time. And we encourage them to fail and we encourage them to keep trying and we encourage them. I think that like vulnerability that we expect of students should be the same expectation that we have of our teachers. Like they they aren't the holders of all knowledge. We know that. We know that they're human. What would I tell my younger self? I would tell her to be proud that you have a unique name. The fact that you have such a unique name doesn't make you stand out in a negative way, but instead it makes you shine. Know that that's like not anything embarrassing. It's gonna take time, but you will understand how important your name is actually, and how your parents did not name you just for the sake of naming someone. I would tell my younger self to learn about the significance of your name and call that teacher out when they mispronounce your name. I will probably just take my younger self by the shoulders, look him dead in the eye and tell him, your name means he who wins the struggle. And it'll be a prophecy if you let it be. 